chapter wise list of all my videos is available at this point for dvd pen drive please write an email to me these videos they do not require internet they play offline there is no problem of buffering and please subscribe to my channel for regular updates thank you thank you for your support once again Let us now take up some miscellaneous solved questions on quadratic equations. These questions they will help you develop more techniques and prepare for you for tackling questions that an examiner can put in an examination. These questions are usually standard questions of quadratic equations. Examiners are aware of them. they usually take their ideas from such questions and in case there is a change of pattern sometime then you can easily expect questions based on these questions that i am discussing today if m and n are the roots of the quadratic equation 2x2 3x 2 equal to 0 then find the equation that has m2 and n2 as its roots This question if you read it it looks tough and if you think a bit then you might think a simpler solution that is to try to solve this equation manually first obtain the values of m and n out of m and n create the values m square and n square then use m square and n square to create your equation but this won't happen i'll explain on the rough side first let us suppose i try to solve this equation on the rough side the person who has put this question is clever enough he knows people will try but this won't be possible see what is b b is minus 3 a is 2 and c is 2 If you calculate b square minus 4ac, what is it? Minus 3 square minus 4 into 2 into 2, which is equal to 9 minus 16 equal to minus 7. You can't find the roots manually because these roots are not in the range of real numbers. They fall outside the domain of real numbers. so you cannot find them with your present knowledge therefore some other technique is required for finding a solution to this question now the general technique for solving such types of questions where he says find the equation that has m square and n square sometimes he might say m by n and n by m as its roots sometimes he might say m cube plus n cube as its roots so these complicated stories he can always put you need to have a general strategy ready for this eventuality so i will erase the board and now solve this with all the steps so that you can solve any type of questions of this type you should start by using what is given to you from the given equation from the given equation let us write what is m and n mn is equal to c by a which is equal to 2 by 2 equal to 1 c is this and a is this c by a is 2 by 2 equal to 1 and we also have m plus n equal to minus b upon a which is equal to minus of minus 3 by 2 because b is minus 3 which is equal to 3 by 2 so as your first step obtain the values of mn and m plus n which can always be done because your equation is given to you and a b and c are easily available now this is the first step that we take in this case for all cases in which you are to construct a quadratic equation of this type the second step is to calculate the value of m square 
into n square that is the product of the roots of the equation that we need to construct m square into n square is equal to m n whole square which is equal to 1 whole square which is equal to 1 so then you write this one which will always be available and ascertainable because we can always multiply m and n and can obtain the value of m square and n square based on m n that is available to us. The third step would be to find out the sum of m square and n square. This might look a bit difficult but let me show you on the rough side that it is actually not difficult if you see that m plus n whole square is equal to m square plus n square plus 2mn which implies m square plus n square is equal to take this 2mn to the other side m plus n whole square minus 2mn this we can see from the basic identities therefore this is equal to m plus n whole square minus 2mn now why I have taken m plus n whole square because m plus n is already known to me from the step 1 if he had said m cube and n cube in place of m square and n square then I would have taken the formula for whole cube and obtained an expression that connects this and these ones so which I will be able to see now m plus n is 3 by 2 whole square minus 2 into 1 because mn is known to be 1 which I can now write as 3 by 2 will be 9 by 4 minus 2 which is equal to 9 minus 8 by 4 which is equal to 1 by 4 and lastly which is the last step the required equation is the required equation is always equal to x square minus sum of roots multiplied by x plus product this is the general formula we know if you are still curious let us see ax square plus bx plus c equal to 0 this can be written as divide throughout by a this can be written as minus minus b by ax plus c by a equal to 0 therefore every equation is of the type x square this is the sum of the roots this is the product of the roots so now I can write the required equation as the sum of the roots is 1 by 4 so I'll write it as x by 4 plus the product of the roots is 1 I'll write 1 equal to 0 which implies multiply throughout by 4 it becomes 4x square minus x plus 4 equal to 0 so when I multiply each term by 4 this becomes 4x square this 4 cancels leaving minus x this one becomes 4 so this is the required equation let us move on to our next question now for what values of k does this equation have equal roots this is the equation that is given to us so the solution will be based on our general formula let me explain you the strategy the general equation is ax square plus bx plus c equal to 0. This equation has equal roots has equal roots if we already know b square minus 4ac is equal to 0. Therefore our equation should have should have b square minus 4ac equal to 0 put b equal to 2k 
c equal to 4 and a is equal to 9. It is better to write them in ABC form. Errors will be less. 9, 2K and 4. Now you can go for the substitution. 2K whole square. This is B square. Minus 4 into A is 9 and C is 4. This should be equal to 0. Which implies this becomes 4K square. Minus this becomes 36 into 4 which is 144 equal to 0. Which implies 4K square is equal to 144 which implies K square is 144 by 4. You can now cancel it off. Which implies k is equal to plus or minus 6 is the answer. These questions they look very scary. People get away from these questions. They think these are tough. But once you have the right approach, write the strategy, it doesn't take even 10 seconds to solve such questions. You get full marks for this. The options you can easily find out and that is the whole trick of this. Let us take our next question now. What must be the range of values for m so that the equation 9x square minus mx plus 4 equal to 0 has linear factors? There is nothing in this question. The Equation is given to us as 9x square minus 4mx plus 4 equal to 0. Now this will have linear factors if it can be written in the form ax plus b into we can write cx plus d equal to 0. He says this will have linear factors. And therefore, this equation should be split into two linear factors. This is the basic requirement. And obviously, obviously, the given equation, the given equation should have two real roots. This is what is the basic requirement in this case. If the equation has two real roots, then we can cast this equation into this one. If you still don't understand, then we can write this equation in this form x plus b over a something and x plus c over something. Let us write any number here d equal to 0. This a with this with x this c is with x but we can write it in the form uh, here i'll write x plus d by c see i'm just casting it here take out a common x plus b by a into a and take out c common so which implies x plus b over a into x plus d over c equal to 0. We have removed these a and c to the other side. They became 0. So therefore, this equation will have linear factors if it can be written in this form, which implies this equation has two real roots, b over a and d over c. These could be any numbers. I was just explaining with some uh, some imaginary a, b, c and d. So basically, this equation has to have two real roots. Only then it can be put in this form. Now real roots will be possible if, which is possible, if b square minus 4ac is more than or equal to 0. Let us isolate a, b and c out of this. 
a is equal to 9, b is equal to minus m and c is equal to 4. Therefore, b square that is minus m whole square minus 4 into 9 into this 4 should be greater than or equal to 0 which implies this will become m square should be more than or equal to let us take this 4 and this what will this figure be let us calculate it 4 into 4 is 16 16 into 9 is 144 therefore m square should be more than or equal to 144 now we know that 144 is same as 12 square therefore our m should be such that the square of m should be more than 144 so m should be numerically more than 12 m should have a numeric value that is more than 12 for example if m is 13 then it would be m square would be 169 which would exceed this one but if m is numerically less than 12 say 10 then this equation will not be possible this inequality will fail therefore we can say is since m square has to be more than or equal to 12 square or we would write it as plus minus 12 square m must be either less than minus 12 or it should be more than or equal to 12. Less than minus 12 will give me values like minus 13, minus 14. The square of which will always exceed 144. More will give me 13, 14. The square of which will exceed 144. Therefore, m must be in this range. So, if you haven't understood this one, I will take a bit more time to explain the whole story with another example. Forget about this question. Suppose I have to find m square more than or equal to 4. I have to find out for which values of m will this inequality be true. Obviously, I can write 4 as 2 square on my rough side. Now m square has to be more than or equal to 2 square. I can uh, on my rough side write this one. This means m has to be more than or equal to 2. But since plus 2 and minus 2 is also possible in this case, therefore I have to write that the absolute value of m should be more than 2 which implies m should be either less than or equal to minus 2 or m should be more than or equal to 2 because in both the cases the absolute value of m will be more than 2. The absolute value is the value ignoring the sign. For example, if m is minus 3, the absolute value is 3. If m is plus 3, the absolute value is 3. So we can generalize, if m square has to be more than or equal to a square, then m must be less than or equal to minus a or m should be more than or equal to a. This artifice you can keep in mind. Let us take to our next question now. This is another standard question which is easily possible in any of your common exams like the bank exams or SSB. Examiner, if someday he finds this question interesting, he will definitely put it because it is easy and not tough. For wet values of k, do the following equations have a common root? That is this equation and this equation that is the root is same for example if this equation has root 2 and 3 then this equation has to have roots 2 and 9 any numbers just the point is that one has to be common now the general approach to this is 
general approach I'm writing. Let, let alpha be the common root. So this is how we can start. Assume that alpha is common. Therefore, this equation will satisfy with alpha. Therefore, alpha square minus k alpha minus 21 is equal to 0. And this equation will also be satisfied by alpha plus 35 is equal to 0. This is the second equation. Subtract subtract equation 2 from 1 to get rid of alpha square. So, I will write minus here, plus here and minus here and if we add alpha square cancels, this becomes 3k alpha minus k alpha 2k alpha and this becomes minus 56 equal to 0 which implies 2k alpha is equal to 56 which implies that k alpha is equal to 56 by 2 equal to 28 which implies alpha is equal to 28 by k. So, I'll make a small partition and move to this vacant space. Now, put this alpha, put this alpha in equation 1. When I put this alpha in equation 1, I will get k, k and then I will be able to solve equation 1 for k. So, I will write it 28 by k whole square minus k into 28 by k minus 21 is equal to 0. Now, you can see that this equation does not have alpha, it has k which I can find by solving this equation because I have to find out the value of k only. So, let us now simplify it. This k goes with this k. This leaves minus 28 minus 21. So, I will write 28 by k whole square is equal to, these two will add and move to the right side. It becomes 49, which implies, so now I will move k up, k square up and 49 down. So, see this, this is 28 into 28 and bring 49 down and take k square to the other side. 28 square, k square goes there and 49 comes down. Let us now perform some cancellations. 77, 7, 7, 4. This makes it 7, 4. So, which implies k square is equal to 4 square which implies k is equal to plus or minus 4 which is the answer. You should remember this whole artifice. This is there since the 18th century. Older mathematics books, they contain the same technique. It is handed over to us by generations. And your examiner might someday reach this and put it in your exams. This is one of the predictable questions. Let us take to our next question now.